Hello everyone, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the skincare products that I will not be finishing. Essentially, they just did not make the cut for me. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and turn it to look good. So with what I do here on YouTube, I do try out a very large number of skincare products, a lot more than the average person. Because of that, when a product does not live up to kind of a standard, they will go unused. And if I do want to take this whole thing seriously and as a job, which I do, I do have to continue to try out new products. And unfortunately, they are going to be products that I just do not touch do not reach for and will go to waste. It is a shame. It is a super, super duper shame that products do have to go to waste, but essentially I do do this for you guys so you don't have to do the same thing and try out a number of different products and for them to not work out for you. Hopefully my videos can help you guys in making a educated purchase for skincare that will suit your skin. So that is why I do this and I hope y'all understand. Hopefully I don't have to explain myself in the future, but there always will be those people who say something and that's totally fine. I understand it, but this is why I do this. I do have it, this container of products that unfortunately I will not be finishing. And I'm going to share with you guys today the reasons to why they did not work out for me. If you do use these products and they do work for you, then please, please, please keep using them. It's just my opinion and why they didn't work for me personally. And that doesn't always mean that it's not going to work for you, especially if you do have different skin type or struggle with different skin issues. So in no particular order, we're going to get into it. First product, I have the Pyongangyur Balancing Gel. This product was something I initially really enjoyed. Essentially, it works as a barrier at the very last step of your skincare routine. It protects your skin, but it also works as a seal to keep all of your previous steps and goodness sealed into your skin overnight. It definitely worked because when I went to wash it off the next morning, I could tell I was like breaking that barrier and I can tell that my skin kept in all that goodness even overnight. Only thing is the texture is definitely hard to work with. It is just a gel as the name suggests. It is a clear gel. You have to pat it in for it to absorb or work. If you try to like rub it on your skin, it just balls up and essentially just becomes like chunks of gel or something. So you have to pat it in and I would be lying if I said this wasn't a hassle. And for that reason, it kind of just sat there unused. When I first got it, I was really excited. It's a very simple ingredients list. It only has seven ingredients, but the texture and the application was just not something I wanted to deal with at the end of the day. And I just always wanted to like, just like slide it across my skin and it would just like not work. Next, I do have two SPFs, the Skin Aqua and Sun Cut Tone Up UV Essence. They are two different brands, but they both have the exact same name, Tone Up UV Essence, and they are essentially the same product. They are a SPF that has a brightening, toning up effect when you apply it by having a tint of lavender to the actual sunscreen. I have talked about these in the past and this was something that was, it was like so sad for me because I bought these in Japan and I was so excited to use them and it was all the rage, super popular. I think it's still very popular now and they just did not work for me. No matter what I did, they just ended up balling up and peeling up on my skin and I just could not wear it for a full day. In my opinion, this sun cut is slightly better than the Skin Aqua, even though the Skin Aqua is the one that seems to be more popular. Although I must say that I have heard a lot of people loving it and it seems to work best for oily skin. I definitely don't have oily skin. I do lean more to dehydrated and dry and that's probably why it just crumbles up on my skin. But I have heard some oily skin people absolutely love it and I must say the look of it is actually gorgeous. Like even when I apply it. Initially it looks so nice. It like brightens and smooths your skin. It works really well as a makeup base as well. It just like literally smooths everything out. But for me like literally within an hour or two it just crumbles off. So if you have oily skin maybe it's worth a try. Like it is still one of the most popular sunscreens in Japan and obviously it is for a reason. Next, I do have the Laneige Cream Skin Refiner. This one is definitely a staple for a lot of people and it has gained cult status in the K-beauty world. 
but I just did not reach for it much. The problem for me is that it just felt kind of greasy and it didn't layer with other products well. For some people, maybe it is that one and done product where they can just apply this and they're good, they're ready to go. I know a lot of like oily skin or combo skin people can get away with literally just using this. But for me who has drier skin, I did need to follow it up with something else, at least a moisturizer. And I just felt like it did not layer well with other products. Sometimes it even felt like there was a bit of a film, like I don't know how to describe it, but it just, didn't feel like it fully absorbed into my skin. For me personally, the I'm From Rice Toner is the better alternative for a similar product. And it also does have the addition of rice extract, which is going to help refine and also brighten your skin. So for anyone who has tried this and weren't too happy with it, I definitely recommend to try out the I'm From Rice Toner. Next, I have the Petit Fee Pink Beta Brightening Eye Mask. So I actually don't think this is a bad product per se. They are little eye masks and I thought it was quite clever that they are a more thin sheet material. Like it is just this thin sheet and I find that because of the material, it actually sticks and adheres to the eye really well. And it doesn't like really flop or slip or anything, which I have experienced with some gel eye masks. Sometimes they just kind of slide down your face. And it does hydrate, but I feel like that's kind of where it ends. I don't think it has like a ton of benefits. And I feel like I could get the same effect with using an eye cream. And when I did leave it on for like a little bit too long because of the thin material. It felt like it kind of dried up and started doing the opposite effect and pulling hydration from my skin. So that's why I um, probably won't end up using these up or they will be going onto my neck probably. I'm just gonna slap them on there and just leave it for the rest of the video. Oh, I actually do have another SPF. I should have mentioned it with the other ones, but I have the Make Prem UV Defense Me Blue Ray Sun Fluid. So I do love the bulk size of this. It is a whopping 200 mils, which is great. I know a lot of you guys are always looking for really big SPFs because you run through them quick, which is a good sign. I'm glad you are all using your SPF. And the fluid text, oh no, it came off. <laughs> and the fluid texture is definitely quite nice. It is just too waterproof for me. Oh my gosh, this thing does not come off. <laughs> it will not come off with normal soap. You kind of have to scrub at it for a while. And sometimes when I forget that I use this on my body and I go to wash it off in the shower, like my loofah will literally get like stuck on my skin. I'll be like, Ugh. Like, why isn't it washing off? Oh, it's because of this. So I have to essentially use like two lots of soap, essentially double cleanse for my body as well to remove this sunscreen. I also do think it's a little bit too drying on my dry skin. After a couple hours, I can feel my skin feel like a little bit tight from it. So if you do have dry or dehydrated skin, probably wouldn't recommend it. But if you do have very oily skin um, or want something that's going to be waterproof, sweatproof, humidity proof, like everything proof, you may like this one. And it is a big size and it will not come off. So if those are your concerns, that might actually work out really really well for you. Although I would probably take this one with me to the beach because I know that it won't rub off. The only thing is I just like don't go to the beach. So I don't have much use for it. Now I have two clay masks, the Innisfree Jeju Volcanic Pore Clay Mask and the Sand and Sky Australian Pink Clay Mask. I love the idea of clay masks and I know they work really well for some people. I just do not have a use for these guys. I use it very, very rarely. And even when I do, I usually only use it in my T-zone. So it's such a small amount that I generally do not get through clay masks and they dry up before I even get like halfway through the jar. And when I do want something like a deep clean or something to cleanse my pores, I do still prefer to use like a powder wash or even like a pore like specific product like the um, CMP Laboratory, what's it called? Blackhead Clear Kit or whatever. I prefer to use something like that over a clay mask. I feel like they are more effective without it being so dry on my skin. Out of these two, I would say maybe the Sanders Sky is a little bit better. It's got like a more silkier kind of feel to it and it is less drying. Although I am pretty sure the Innisfree one is a lot more affordable. So with the price difference, I would say you're better off going with the Innisfree. I don't think there's enough of a difference between the two to fork out like 
the price of however that this one is. I have a spot treatment. It is the Buy Wish Trend Sulfur 3% Clean Gel. Another product that I don't necessarily find um, bad. I just didn't have much use for it personally. The texture is quite a true gel texture and I actually was very intrigued initially because I saw Yunya Ni using it and she recommended putting like a big glob of it on active pimples and it will help to kind of calm that down and soothe it um, within like a day. So I was very, very intrigued. Although for me, I found like the formula would dry up and just be like a white clump. And I don't really like that, I guess. <laughs> Although they do say you can apply a very thin layer all over and it's still effective. So you could probably use it that way, but I do still end up reaching for my like Holy Grail um, spot treatment people cream, which is the Lion Pear Cream. But I do want to give this one a shout out because one of my lovely subbies, one of you guys, actually mentioned that this is their absolutely Holy Grail spot treatment for their cystic acne. And they actually said that they were sad that the product wasn't getting enough recognition so here is the shout out um for me personally i only usually get like small one-off pimples so if you do struggle with cystic acne this might be one that actually could really work for you next i do have the hado hado wanda black rice hyaluronic cream <sighs> so this one's i don't know exactly why i don't like this cream. But to begin with, I did find this um, packaging, although it's absolutely adorable, I found the packaging quite hard to use. It's quite a hard plastic, so I don't find it's like the easiest to squeeze out. They do have a bigger size that just comes in a jar, so that might be the better option. I don't know, like the texture's nice, but when I rub it, I feel like it kind of shows that kind of foamy. I don't know if it's foamy, but it kind of like gets white on the skin. Eventually it disappears. But I don't know. It's just one that I can't really decide why, but I just do not reach for it. And the lavender scent is also very strong in this product. Usually I am totally fine with fragrance, but lavender isn't one of my go-tos or my favorite smells. And it is pretty strong in this one. So for me, it just did not work out. Next, I have the Rovectin Seeker Care Purifying Toner. I know this is almost empty. So you guys might be like, what do you mean you're not finishing? It wasn't me. It was actually Logan who was using this product because I used it like a few times and I really didn't see any benefit for me. It is supposed to be kind of like a soothing, gentle toner that helps to kind of relieve irritated skin, but I didn't really see its benefits. And for me, having dehydrated skin, I feel like there was definitely not enough hydration and it did leave my skin feeling kind of tight. So I just realized it wasn't for me. So I passed it on to Logan and he seems to be okay with it. Like he's kind of a it's all right. He doesn't love it. There are other toners he likes better. I guess this is like one of the flops for Revectin because I feel like they've been pretty successful with pretty much all of their products. Once again, if you like it, I am sorry. Like I, I'm not trying to shit on you or anything. It just didn't work for me. It is another one that is quite strong on the um, lavender fragrance, which it is specifically made for sensitive skin. It's hypoallergenic, no fragrance, blah, blah, blah. But it does have essential oil lavender fragrance so I just don't really know why it's necessary. Last product that we have today is the good old green tangerine Vita C cream intense. I really wanted to like this cream and I loved the serum that was the part of the same range and I thought it'd be nice to have a brightening cream that contains vitamin C. I just can't do the texture. It is a weird texture. It's almost kind of like Vaseline-y. It's quite thick but it's like trying to be a gel and it's kind of waxy it's kind of vaseline -y. I just do not like the texture and it does not dry down once you apply it it is very sticky and it stays sticky and it just like doesn't go away which is a shame because I love the fragrance like it's such a nice fragrance I love the um good old Vita C range for their fragrance it's this fresh citrus and it's lovely. But I know they do have like a regular cream because this is the intense version that is in a pump and they do have like one that's in like a tube 
That's their regular cream. That's not intense. So maybe that one's better. It's a bit more lightweight and still has the same benefits of like the brightening vitamin C. So unfortunately that was a no-go for me for its texture. Alrighty, well they were all of the products that unfortunately I will not be finishing this year. This year was probably the first year that I grew the most on this channel and got opportunities that I never had before and that is why I've got this list like in the past even if I really didn't like a product I would have like used it up it's kind of like a blessing in disguise because by having more opportunity I've had to try out new products and that is thanks to you guys I just want to say thank you for being there for watching my videos for subscribing for liking because you guys are the reason why I get to do this so thank you so much once again if you did like any of these products please keep using them there's definitely no reason to why you can't if it works for you that is amazing if you do want to see my last empties like products that I did generally like for this year please click here and if you do want to watch just another fun video by me click here and I will see you guys in the next video